Just when you start to believe in them again, the 2023 Cardinals smash you in the face with another blown save. This is Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Haffern, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou, and a lifetime Cardinals fan. And I am your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio and the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. Free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube. Like, subscribe, comment, interact with us. Hit the notification button so you know when the new episodes are posted. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Sometimes the twenty twenty three season it just feels like a cruel joke, right? Like it's it's been bad, like a, like a jagged little pill to to steal a line from Alanis Morissette. Just a jagged little pill that the organization, the players, and the fans are being forced to to swallow due to all of the cardinal devil magic, as it's known, that uh, that we've used over the years to remain competitive for as long as the Cardinals have. You know, they've had a lot of success for quite some time. And perhaps this is the year (laughs) that it's just going to humble all of us, force us all to kind of take a look in the mirror and reevaluate how good we've had it for as long as we've had it, and how we are going to get back to doing things the Cardinal way, which is the ultimate goal. Yesterday, I asked if you felt like the Cardinals were turning a corner after playing some pretty good ball over the last few series. You know, you got the series win against the Mets and the Nationals. You split with the Cubs in London. And then you had Tuesday's win against the Astros, which was really, really good. And for six innings last night, they look like a team that had turned the corner, did they not? Now, there are three big spots in this game from last night that I want to talk about, okay? Number one, why do the Cardinals starters always suck in the first inning? What is it about the first inning that is so darn difficult for these guys? Michaelis gets off to another bad start last night. Not sure what the heck the issue is with Miles or really any of the starters in the first inning, because most of their numbers are terrible. But Michaelis is really bad in the opening inning. He gives up three more in the first last night. First pitch of the game, double by Altuve, who was back in the lineup. It was a pain in the butt last night, wasn't he? Uh, then there's a walk, then another double, then a sac- uh, a sacrifice fly, then a single. And just like that, you're in a massive hole. It's three to nothing. Michaelis's ERA in the first inning this year is at 8.47. What in God's name is he not doing right during warmups in the bullpen that is causing these issues? I mean, I'm not out there. I'm not the bullpen coach. I'm not the pitching coach. I'm not anybody's coach. I don't know what the routine is, but good Lord, man. In 17 starts, so that means 17 first innings, Miles Michaelis has allowed 16 runs on 30 hits. I mean, he's like an extended batting practice when he goes out there. I mean, he genuinely comes out to the mound and gives the other team the lead almost immediately every time he starts. And and he's not the only one. I'm not just picking on Miles. He just... Happened to pitch last night and wasn't very good in the first inning. The first inning ERA is on the staff this year. Michaelis, 8.47. Steven Matz, 10.80. He's now been banished to the bullpen. Jack Flaherty, 6. Adam Wainwright, 5. Jordan Montgomery, 4.50. Teams are hitting a league high 346 against the Cardinals in the first inning this year. That's ridiculous. Like, that is so bad. 
You don't realize how bad that is. It's terrible. And the team's got this fragile psyche going on this year due to all of the losing they've endured. And we talk about consistency and how the Cardinals need to find consistency. Here's the one thing that they do consistently, and that's fall behind in the first inning. They are constantly forced to come from behind right out of the gate. And again, I don't know what's causing this. I can't explain it. But the people who are in charge need to figure it out. They've had, what, 79 games to do it so far? Nothing. What are you guys getting paid for? Fix it. Fix it. Change everything that you're doing out there in the bullpen before the game then. Because none of it's working. And the funny thing is, the team with the worst ERA in the first inning in Major League Baseball is the NL Central leading Reds. But they somehow, some way, come back in every game, which is something the Cardinals haven't shown that they can do yet. Now, eventually, I think it will catch up to them. I, th- I think it will. I think that's going to be the, the issue for the Reds moving forward is just pitching in general. Their bullpen's tapped. Their starting pitching is not very good. And eventually, the offense will probably go cold, and you'll see them start to lose more. But you've got the Reds. You've got the Pirates, the Blue Jays, the Rockies, and the Mets ahead of the Cardinals as the worst first-inning ERA in baseball. And they're third in the league and the most runs given up in the first inning with 58. It's got to get better. You just cannot continue to live this way. But let's go back to the game last night. So you're down 3 nothing. That sucks. But they're used to this position, right? <laughs> I mean, it's happened to them so many times. So the phrase, again, punch back has to take place. And if it's perfectly here, because the Cardinals do just that. And they do it against a tough right-handed pitcher, Christian Javier, who was 7-1 and one coming into this game. He's, he's a good pitcher. But Donovan singles, Newt singles, and on the sixth pitch of his at-bat, Nolan Arenado rips a three-run shot over the left field wall to tie it up, his 16th of the season. And the Cardinals aren't done yet. They get a single by Gorman and a double by Alec Burleson. Welcome back to the lineup. And they take the lead 4-3. to three. And before the game... Because when I do something stupid and I say something that is proven wrong, I'm going to call myself out for it. Before the game, I questioned the idea of sitting Jordan Walker, riding a 16-game hitting streak in favor of Alec Burleson. But the splits for Javier say that you should get as many left-handed hitters as you can in your lineup. So Ali did that, and it it paid off. So props to Ali on making that decision there. It wasn't a popular one. A lot of people were upset that Jordan Walker was not in the game last night, but it worked. It worked. It wasn't the offense that failed them in this one for the most part. We're going to get more. It will get more on that a little bit later. But now you're working with a a four to three lead, which gets pushed to six to three. Miles figures it out. Whatever happens to him, the switch takes place, and he ends up pitching a pretty good game for the next few innings. But the lead goes to 6-3 to three, thanks to a 443-foot solo blast by Goldie, an absolute bomb in the second, his 14th of the year. And then you get another RBI single by Goldie in the fourth. Things are moving right along. We're doing okay. We're starting to feel a little confident about ourselves, aren't we? And then we get to the sixth inning. And this, well, for before we get to the sixth inning, we've still got more going on in that fourth inning, okay? Because this is the inning where things kind of take a turn. They they turn again in the sixth inning, but this is where things take their first turn into a negative area, all right? This is going to be major point number two in this game. We're going to jump into that next, and I'll tell you how it affected everything moving forward on Locked on Cardinals. Buying tickets to your favorite event should not be stressful. Cardinals are back in town against the Houston Astros. They'll play uh, uh, again tonight. And then you've got the New York Yankees coming to town this weekend. Always a hot ticket when the Yankees are in town. It's certainly not going to be an easy one to get your hands on unless you use game time. Fast, easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. Great deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee. So you can stop stressing over trying to find the tickets that you want and get them and get, you know, yourself mentally prepared for the fun you're about to have. And you don't have to plan months in advance. That's not an issue. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event with exclusive flash deals on tickets for all your favorite sports, baseball, football, basketball, hockey, concerts, comedy, theater. They've got it all. 
And they've got that game time guarantee, which means you'll always get the best price. If you end up finding tickets in the same section and the same row for cheaper, game time's going to take care of that for you. Credit you 110% of the difference. Tickets get sent directly to your phone. You don't have to worry about trying to find them in your email somewhere that'll get lost in your spam folder. I hate it when that happens. Don't have to worry about it with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code locked on MLB for $20 off your next purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code locked on MLB. That's $20 off your next purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. The Cardinals are back home again to face the defending world champion Astros tonight. You can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. Again, thank you to the everydayers for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. We appreciate all the comments, the tweets, everything that you guys say and do on YouTube. Appreciate all of you guys. So uh, keep it coming. I'm always, uh, especially during games, I'm always tweeting back and forth with people when I'm not busy doing other things because I can't always just sit and watch an entire game in its entirety. You know, it's just, it's not feasible. Sometimes I got other things going on, but um, I do appreciate it. It's like, we're all watching the game together and tweeting back and forth. It's like, we're all in one big living room, you know, but we're up to point number two of three that I want to, I want to discuss in last night's game. And then in the bottom of the fourth inning, there's a huge momentum shift that goes down because you get the RBI single from Paul Goldschmidt. Your lead is at six to three but you still got the bases loaded and one out a chance to seriously do some damage. The Astros are on the ropes at this point. This is not a team that is all that confident in themselves right now. Again, what was it? Three and eight in their last 11. So they've been losing a lot recently and to be down six to three at Bush stadium bases loaded one out. Here's a chance to really step on their throats and just end it knockout blow to a team that is just wobbling all over the place. You've got your three, four hitters coming up in Lars Nupar and Nolan Arenado. And what happens? Nothing. You get nothing. Nupar fouls out to the third baseman. Arenado pops out to the first baseman. And when this happened, I tweeted out, man, back-to-back pops up, pop-ups. Hope that doesn't come back to bite them later. These are the moments that this team has come up short in throughout the season. A chance to bury your opponent and just end it. And instead, you get nothing, and it gives the other team a a surge of extra life because they just dodged a major bullet. And man, do I hate it when I'm right in these types of situations because the Astros do come back. And they played two runs in the sixth inning against Miles Michaelis on a two-out, two-strike, where have you heard that before, double. And all of a sudden, we have a one-run game. And yes, that curveball at the top of the zone against Myers, that was a strike. It was pointed out that it was a strike during the telecast. If you go to the uh, umpire scoreboards on Twitter, it's a strike. They pointed out. Big miss there by the umpire. But that's life. That's life, man. And you got to be able to overcome that. It ends up bouncing Michaelis from the game. And after Palante almost gives all of us a heart attack, right? He walks the next two guys. Now you got the bases loaded. This dude can't figure out the strike zone and somehow, some way strikes out Kyle Tucker, <laughs> one of the best hitters in the Astros lineup. I, bizarre, but he gets him to whiff. They survive, still got the lead. And then another reason that this sixth inning becomes a bummer is because then we learn that the team loses Nolan Arenado. Leaves the game with back tightness. They're saying it's a, a day-to-day issue. It had locked up. Um, it had locked up, I, I think, the game before. And then it tightened up again in this one. So they they pull them. And, it, and you know, it's insane. It's just all season. There's just something. There's always something, right? And just when the offense seems to feel like it's starting to click, like where everybody's kind of doing pretty good, right? And you lose your biggest gun. Got to leave the game. I mean, nothing is ever easy for this team this year, is it? But Brennan Donovan steps up, pops a solo shot in the bottom of the sixth inning, and things are fine until we get to the eighth inning. And that's when the poop hits the fan. 
Giovanni Gallegos. All right, here we go. Giovanni Gallegos strolls into this game. And I don't remember anybody complaining about them going to Gio in this situation when it initially happened. Holly made the call. And I don't remember anybody really speaking up going, oh, boy, we're screwed now. Now, some people did point out that Chris Stratton looked awfully good in that seventh inning, and he did. He did. Took him just nine pitches to breeze through the inning. Very well rested. And Gio just pitched the night before. Maybe stick with Stratton in that situation, but here's what they're looking at, okay? Gio's numbers in the eighth inning before last night, outstanding. Outstanding. Uh, he had pitched in the eighth inning 15 times this season and allowed just one run in a combined 11 innings of work. Stratton had pitched in the eighth inning 16 times so far this season and has allowed 10 runs in a combined 14 innings of work. So if Ali is going off the numbers there, then Gio is the right call. You know, like that that's the right thing to do. And if he had left Stratton in and he got shelled, we'd be yelling at him going, why didn't you bring Gio in? Look how good he is in the eighth inning. And last night, it, it, we get the Gio we all have nightmares about. Because when he's bad, he is really bad. Like, it's not like he just gives up, hey, here's one run on a hit. Like, he gets creamed. And the Astros took advantage of him. Lead-off single, then a walk. The Astros bunt to move the runners over to second and third. Brings up Altuve. Rips a 1-2 fastball on the inner half of the plate over the wall in left field. All of a sudden, the Cardinals are losing 8-7. to seven. And it doesn't stop there. And this is another problem, maybe, that after giving up that home run, maybe you should have pulled him after that. Because when he doesn't have it, he doesn't have it. There's really no sense in letting him just stand out there and get his head kicked in. And Ollie left him out there. Then he gives up a ground rule double to Tucker and then a hanging slider to Jose Abreu. He mashes it over the center field wall. And now it's 10 to 7. One run game, there's still some hope, right? Three run game, it's pretty tough. That's a tough mountain to climb. Cardinals' momentum is gone. The crowd starts to leave. <laughs> they didn't stick around for it. The offense doesn't do squat in the final two winnings, and it's another gut-wrenching loss for the Cardinals, who have now blown 16 save chances. You know how many they blew last year in the whole season? 17. They've almost equaled that amount at the end of June. And I hate to say I told you so. I hate doing that, but I'm going to do it right here. Because this offseason, when it was made apparent that the Cardinals were not going to add another starter, not going to pay for that, not going to buy a position player, weren't going to go for the shortstops, too expensive. I said on multiple occasions, if you're not going to spend this free agent money that you do have available on those areas, you should spend it on the bullpen. Why not build a lockdown bullpen? There were some decent names available. Mo stuck with the guys that they had, and it's been an absolute mess, an absolute mess. We're going to talk more about the bullpen. We're going to talk more about Geo. We'll do that next, and we're going to talk about tonight's game. Kind of got to bring that up, too. So we'll get into all of that next on Locked on Cardinals. Cardinals face the Astros again tonight. You can catch every pitch of the Cardinals hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Cardinals. Now, the easy thing to do is to point the finger at Giovanni Gallegos because of what happened last night. And if it feels like we've been in this situation with Gio more frequently lately, you would be correct because we have. Gallegos is having a really, 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 really bad June. It is not going well for him. He's now 0-2, and his ERA in the month has ballooned to 11. Now, of course, relief pitcher ERAs, they fluctuate pretty quickly because if you have one or two bad games, all of a sudden, it looks like you're the worst pitcher on the planet. He's not the worst pitcher on the planet, but he's been getting hit more frequently this month. Now, we had one blow-up game on May 3rd against the Angels where 
He allowed three runs on four hits, two of them home runs, which has become a, a very strange thing with him. Like in the game, he's given up seven home runs now on the year. Six of those have happened where he's given up multiple home runs. So seven total, three times he's given up multiple home runs in an appearance. So that's weird. <laughs> but again, we're saying when he's bad, he's really, really bad. And the, and the other team crushes him. Uh, the rest of May, though, outside of that game against the Angels, not too shabby. 11 appearances, ERA 1.42, picks up six saves. You may not even realize that, <laughs> that he's got a few saves on this year. June has not gone well for Gio, though. He gets lit up by the Pirates on June 2nd. Four runs, three hits, two of them home runs, and that's in just two-thirds of an inning. Remember that one? That was the one where he gave up the home run, he pointed like it was going to be a pop-up to the left fielder, and it goes over the wall which was kind of embarrassing for him. He then has two scoreless outings, gets lit up again by the Giants. Third blown save of the year when he serves up that dinger to Yastrzemski in the ninth inning, which ties the game up. And they ultimately end up losing that game in extra innings. That's the game where I ended up punching my, my car seat. <laughs> I was so upset. He has four more scoreless appearances. And then last night, five runs on four hits, two of them home runs. And the one thing in common that I noticed other than the home runs in these appearances is he ends up walking a guy in all three of those bad outings here in the month of June, he's walked a guy and he hasn't in any of the other games this month. And I guess when you, to when Gio puts a guy on bad things happen, that's just something that is going to occur. It's almost like a tell. You know how you have those with poker players and you can tell when they they have a good hand or a bad hand because they'll do something, they'll scratch something, whatever. Geo walks a guy, better prepare yourself for pain. <laughs> I think that's where we're at right now. And it's not just Geo. And I know people expected me to come onto the podcast today and just tear into him. It's not just Geo, though. He's just the guy that the focus is on right now because of his struggles this month and what happened last night. It's fresh in our minds. Ali doesn't have a lot of trustworthy options out there in his bullpen. Ryan Helsley hasn't been as dominant this year after uh, his absurd numbers last year. The idea that he was going to recreate what he did last year is a bit ridiculous. It was going to be really, really tough. But he's fallen off a lot more than I think people thought he would. But he's hurt right now, so you can't even throw him, so it doesn't matter. Jordan Hicks, everyone's darling at the moment because he's been so good recently. Do you remember April when people were trying to DFA this man? People wanted him off the team. Send him down. Get rid of him. He's terrible. His ERA was over six. He had a really rough start to the season. But now he's like the one shutdown arm you have left in your bullpen. Chris Stratton was very good last night. Pointed that out. Nine pitches, breeze through the inning, but his ERA is near six this month. He's allowed five runs in seven and two thirds innings. Genesis Cabrera, ERA over five in June, five runs in eight and two thirds innings. Drew Verhagen, I know we make fun of him. A lot of people do. He's actually been okay. He's been one of your more reliable arms. Andre Palante makes me sweat every time he's out there because he walks everybody. He's walked eight people in nine and a third innings in this month. That can't happen if you're a relief pitcher. You can't just put free guys on for these teams. You've got Steven Matz out in the bullpen now, who has been actually kind of decent. And like I've said before, if you can find a spot where Steven Matz is productive, then just leave him there. Unless you absolutely have to bring him back into the starting rotation, like injuries cause that then I understand, but he's fine out there. Just leave him out there. Just leave him out there, okay? But those are the options <laughs> that Ali has. Hicks can't throw every game. Like, these are the guys who have to get it done, and they just aren't very good. I don't know anybody who thought they were all that good coming into the year. You had hopes that you would get big years out of some of these guys, that Cabrera would have a bounce back year. Maybe Jojo Romero would do something. Uh, I had big, big ideas and big uh, aspirations for 
uh, Zach Thompson this year. They screwed that up. I don't have to go down that path again and talk about it. The biggest downfall of this team this year has been pitching. It's been pitching. We all knew it was going to be pitching. This offseason, everyone said, your pitching isn't good enough. And Mo did nothing. He did nothing about it. And this is your result. And these are the things he's going to have to live with. And if you want to get good pitchers at the deadline, which is what people are hoping will happen. I think we're beyond the whole Goldschmidt, Arenado trade stuff. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It was fun to discuss, but it's not going to happen. And if you want good pitchers at the deadline, and I'm not talking about Band-Aid guys that, you know, to just kind of plug a hole for now and uh, stop the bleeding. I'm talking about legit good pitchers. Then you have to part ways with some of your good offensive players because that's where the Cardinals' strength is. And it's going to be names like Edmund, Donovan, Gorman, Carlson, O'Neal, Newt Bar. These are the guys you're going to have to end up giving up. Those are the people other teams will want. You can't expect to trade Burleson and Yepes and Oscar Mercado and whatever other backup players you want to come up. Like, it's that's not going to get it done. You can't trade those little pieces, like a bunch of them. You're not going to give up like eight of these dudes that aren't very good and expect to get somebody like a Dylan Cease or a Lucas Giolito from the White Sox. Maybe you can get Lance Lynn from them. Maybe that's something that'll work out for him. That sounds like a very Mosaic move is to bring Lance Lynn back in. But if you want somebody to make a difference, like an Eduardo Rodriguez from the Tigers, or I saw Max Scherzer, I saw his name pop up. Maybe he wants to come home to St. Louis. I know he'd rather go somewhere and win a World Series, but maybe this is something that they could get done, that he would waive his no-trade clause to go somewhere else if that's what ended up needing to happen because the Mets are a disaster so far. But you might be able to rebuild this bullpen with some of the lesser pieces. If you do it wisely. If you do it wisely. And perhaps that the, that's the route the Cardinals need to go down. Maybe we should stop dreaming about uh, finding an ace starting pitcher at the deadline. And start fixing this bullpen. Because imagine, again, 16 blown saves. Imagine if that's just cut in half, because every team's going to blow saves. It just is what it is. But imagine if that's cut in half where you are, and those ended up being wins instead of losses. Where would you be then? So maybe that's something they should be thinking about instead of focusing on a starting pitcher. Just throwing out the, throwing it out there as an option. Thank you for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. Be sure to catch every pitch of the Cardinals sometime broadcast for tonight's game against the Astros with SiriusXM on the SXM app, just search Cardinals. You've got Adam Wainwright. It's going to be his first start since London and uh, since he shut off his Twitter, which still has not happened, um, That where he's started his Twitter up again as far as I've seen, um, which is very sad to think that Adam Wainwright got bullied off of Twitter by people who were saying horrible things to him. So that's unfortunate. But he's going to get a, a chance to prove people wrong. Tonight at Bush Stadium, he's going to be opposed by J.P. France. It's a winnable game. And if you take two out of three from the Astros, uh, yeah, you wish last night had it ended better. But if you take two out of three from the Astros, again, successful series. And again, all we're looking for is progress right now. Just looking for progress. First pitch going to be 615 St. Louis time. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Subscribe and uh, like on YouTube. Help the channel and love for the Cardinals grow. You're the best fans in baseball for a reason. And I will see you next time on Locked on Cardinals.